Let's talk a bit about Wednesdays in Mississippi. The idea comes from Polly Cowan. Yes. Uh, how did it come about? Well, you know, in the summer of 64, Bob Moses set up the Freedom Schools. And when the word got out that he would be having volunteers from all the major Ivy League and other colleges, the word was also out that these were communists going there. And Polly Cowan, whose husband uh, had been in the whole of television and the like, was, was accompanying her husband to England. And she wrote back to me a card on which she said, hearing all these mixed messages about the Freedom Schools, I think it would be very good if we had the Cadillac crowd of interracial teams go into Mississippi on what we could call Wednesdays in Mississippi and do some service, carry our message and the like, and see how we could be helpful and support all these young people who'll be down there working. Well, we developed that idea, and Polly Cowan and I, um, together, uh, set up the whole plan. We trained our staff. We had to have an interracial staff. Mm -hmm. But the idea was that we would have interracial teams of women, all of whom had to have some talent. It was not to be as come and see. It was not to be a visit. They were to go in to do something. They had to contribute something in the schools. They also had to commit themselves to preparing the, on Tuesday, going on on Wednesday. We met separately in our racial groups in the daytime, and then we came together in the evening as an interracial group and left on Thursdays. But in the course of all of this, they had to agree that they would go back home and work on civil rights in their own communities. So they are engaged not only in Mississippi, but have to pledge to do something back when home. they return home. Now, I imagine many of these women probably were already active. Many in were very, home. very active. But it was really not only to be active, but to carry the true story of what was happening in Mississippi back to their communities. Because, you know, all during that time, it was very hard to get the truth out about what young people were doing, what the whole freedom movement was about. And it was a support system to that group of young people in that movement, but also a base for making connections for people to say, in Minnesota, you may not have exactly the same problem, but you, there is some aspect of civil rights you could be working on. In, in, your, in your particular community, you can be helpful, but you also have to be able to say what young people are doing to try to bring freedom and how they are working. Now, was it difficult to recruit the white women who well, went? Well, we were very selective. We started with some we knew. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then after a while, it was interesting. Women began to call and said they would be interested. In the end, 114 women went down during the summers. They took the risk. Some women, I remember some white women said, I remember one saying, well, if my husband knew that I was in this meeting, he would give me a divorce. Mm. She said, but I have to think of my children and my grandchildren. And other women, black women, who, when they came together, said, we have never met together before, but we're never going to separate again. Mm. So that we were able to make connections and get, bring, bring women together. Now, if it's difficult to recruit the northern white women who went, how difficult was it to recruit the southern Mississippi white women with whom they met? Yeah, we were, we, that was very hard. But we were very fortunate. We had an Anne, Anne Hewitt, but Pat Darien, who later became the, uh, in the Carter administration uh, responsible for human rights, Women, those we call them our anchors. Mm -hmm. And those women helped us to, to reach touch with other women. Uh, Jane Scott, who was very active in the church women's movement, uh, she drew in others who were there. But it was very interesting how that circle grew and it widened so that you had white women as well as black women. And when they came together, it was, it was an experience that would be even hard to describe, mm. what it meant when, when those women came together and shared what they had been doing the, during the day. 
it created a new sense of determination. And um, the New York Times called it saying that the women had gone behind the, the cotton curtain. Mm -hmm. And it was true because we did it quietly. There was no publicity, but it was, there was a, an earnestness. And I think the thing that Polly Cowan and I felt all the time was that when we sat down and to do our briefing, debriefing, that so many of those women would say, even they had not seen exactly what was happening, the way in which uh, Mississippi law enforcement was treating people, they had never witnessed that before. Mm -hmm. That when we went into, uh, when she and I were traveling, went into Hattiesburg, for example, we were followed by a car. And we looked and as we got into the church, a cocktail, a moment of cocktail came through the window. And naturally, it fizzled. We were glad it did. Mm -hmm. But a student from Oberlin ran to the organ and played the Hallelujah Chorus. And everybody stood and sang it as if if we'd all been a chorus, you'd have thought mm -hmm. we'd all been trained together. But there was that sense of relief. So that it was not an easy thing that people were doing. It, they took risks. But, but there was a sense that we may not be achieving everything, but we felt that there's a nucleus of people there who went on working. 